AWS Best Practices. Hold on tight, this is going to come at you fast. The legendary quote from the Amazon CTO is absolutely true. Everything fails all the time. So the number one practice with AWS is a redundant design. And the beauty with AWS is they make it easy for you. Since you don't have resource constraints other than your pocketbook, you can spin up a duplicate instance and even use things like auto scaling to fill in instances when they are either not performing well or they fail. Many of the AWS services themselves, meaning the ones that are built into AWS, like a elastic load balancers like SNS, like SQS, like Route 53 DNS. I mean, a lot of those assume a redundant backend anyway, as in Amazon has built a redundancy into their service. Tying right into that redundant design is a concept known as loose coupling. Loose coupling means the looser that you build your design, as in the more distributed and the less dependent on each other, the better the design you're going to have. Meaning, Every application component is independent from the other. You don't have hard ties in your web server saying, go specifically to this application server by IP address or by that name, because as soon as you do that, that hard tie might break. So instead, you can use integration with AWS services. For example, maybe send your web servers to something like an elastic load balancer, which is redundant by design, and then can distribute it to however many application servers or transcoding servers you have behind the scenes. Some examples of this is, for instance, using Elastic Load Balancer in this way, or using the simple notification service instead of relying on a specific server to send notifications. You see what I mean? Is it, Using AWS built-in services instead of trying to build the services on your own because AWS has built redundancy into that. In addition, using a service like the Simple Queue service might even save you a server. Normally, you would have to provision your own server or service within a server to store messages as they're waiting to be processed for, say, like by a transcoding server. Instead, you can rely on a redundant AWS service and eliminate a server and a function altogether from your infrastructure that you have to maintain. Next, build your infrastructure based on an elastic design, a, a new word that Amazon has brought to the industry, meaning you can grow or shrink your infrastructure on demand. Your instances, meaning your virtual machines in the cloud, are drones. The way that you achieve that is by building Amazon machine images, essentially hard drives on ice that are pre-configured in the best possible way for their function. So you might have an, an AMI based on a web server. You might have an AMI based on a database server. You might have an AMI based on question mark. Whatever you're using Amazon Web Services for, you build all these perfect images on ice that will be tweaked, but that'll happen during the boot process. It's known as bootstrapping to change their host name to be unique and you know whatever elements that you need to add, you know, update software, apply updates, all all those kind of things during the actual boot of that instance. Then you can have a truly scalable infrastructure. When your web servers are experiencing an extra load, you can have the system automatically with auto scaling start adding more servers to that group so that they can support the extra load that you're getting. Now, the beauty of this is as that load goes down or these servers are no longer needed or they start failing some health monitoring checks because AWS, even though they're wonderful and beautiful, they do run on actual physical hardware. So if some of that hardware either dies or goes down, you have health monitoring that can find them and eliminate them from the cl cluster on the fly. Next up, security. AWS is secure, or was secure, until they invited us. They've passed just about every major security certification that exists. However, it is a shared responsibility model, which means they don't get into our operating systems. They allow us to maintain our firewalls. So we need to make sure that we adhere to best security principles using iron wall security, meaning open small little individual ports in your firewall instead of fishnet where everything is open, except a few big things. Uh, encrypt everything that you can. They make it again very easy with AWS. Same thing with multi-factor authentication. Usually a big hassle for an IT person to implement that. It's a click of a button, so use it wherever you can in AWS. Now, free your mind to think with this new IT paradigm of unlimited resources. Think about farming. What's the advantage to using one plow for five hours versus five plows for one hour to plow a field? Well, the advantage is you don't have to buy a whole bunch of plows, right? Well, AWS has changed that whole paradigm where they're saying you can have as many plows as you want and you pay per hour that they're used. So that should start freeing you like the New York Times did to say, you know what? I'm going to run 100 servers for an hour rather than running one server for 100 hours and get the job done quickly. Using this new mindset, you can accomplish your goals so much faster. 
AWS really does change the way that you think about IT. For more AWS best practices and actually a whole bunch of other stuff, we have many AWS series, come on over to cvtnuggets.com. My name is Jeremy Chara. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.